Hello, it's Duncan. To me, coding feels more like gardening than building. Instead of erecting permanent structures, we are planting things that grow and occasionally die. Sometimes we need to move code from one place to another where it's better suited. Sometimes a class is alive but just cluttering things up. If so, then we can dig it out and spend the time that we would have spent weeding and feeding on more productive tasks. Today then we're going to remove code from our Guild Rose codebase, leaving it with the same set of features for customers, but easier to work with for developers. Oh, magical banana. For the first few stories of our Guild Rose stock control system, we were storing data about stock in a tab separated file. It looked like this. So we have this irritating comment at the top where we remember when this file was last updated so that we don't rely on the file system. And then each item has an ID and a name and its sell by date and its current quality. And when Alice and our customer wanted to add items to stock, she could open this tab separated file in Excel and just type things into the columns. As the project progressed, we added this web page, which allows us to add new items by typing into this form and delete items by clicking on here and clicking delete. So apart from editing an existing item, which it seems Alison hasn't had to do much, we can perform the standard CRUD, or maybe CRUD, operations through the web interface and the miracle of HTMX. We also migrated our data source so that we store the data in an items table in Postgres, here it is. And we came up with this scheme where we never delete items from this table, we just add them with the last modified date, which is wasteful of storage, but means that we can reproduce the state of the data at any point in the past. Now, we didn't just cut over from this stock.tsv to this items table in one big bang. What we did was we arranged things so we were writing both into the stock.tsv and the items table at the same time. And we did that with dual items. Here it is. And you'll see that it has a source of truth, which I think is the database table, but it reads and writes the stock.tsv at the same time so that it was kept up to date as a backup. If we should ever see that they got out of sync, we'd raise these analytics event here, you can see stock list saving mismatch, and here stock list loading mismatch. But we haven't actually seen any of those in production, so we're now happy with our Postgres solution. I haven't got round to removing these dual items, because frankly I had more interesting things to do, but it's complication that we don't need. Running the test slows things down a bit. Whenever we show the code base to somebody, they always scratch their head and say, what on earth is that still doing there? So this feels like a good time to do a bit of pruning, to strip the code base back to its bare essentials so that it's as simple as it can be. We're not carrying the weight of any code that we don't need. Another reason for removing dual items is that if I run the tests, you'll see the dual items tests, because it does use the database, is taking 600 milliseconds. The DB items tests appears to only be taking 86, but I think they're sharing some startup time. If I was to go to the dual items test and just disable it and rerun, it does seem to knock several hundred milliseconds off a test run time. That might not make any difference in a normal project, but it will speed up my video editing because I often cut those delays out. So then let's go looking for dual items and see how we can remove it from our code base. It's here and we'll find usages. It's using some tests and it's used in the app. Anywhere else? No. Well, that's good then. So we can go to our app and, ah, there it is. So our app is built on an items and the implementation of items that we're using is a dual items where we're reading from the stock file and the database and I don't know which way around those are. Ah, so in fact, the source of truth was the stock file, not the database. Given those are kept in sync though, in production, it should be that we can just now read from the DB items. So I think we should just be able to get rid of that, leaving us that. And before I do anything else, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun our test main. There we go. And now if I bring down the previous data and refresh, it should be loading not from the tab separated file, but from the database, but the data should be the same. Let's have a look. Well, it didn't send any changes, so that's good. And we did actually read because we can see that in our structured logging there. Okay. Guess we may have an import here. Ah, oh, well, in fact, our first warning is that the stock file is now unused, and that's because we're not using this as part of our stock file items. I think maybe we'll come back to that. So first of all, we'll go to our dual items tests, and I think we can now just delete this class because we know that dual items is not used anywhere in production code. The easiest place to do that is probably be here. We can say, oh, interesting. We can rename the file from there, but we don't seem to be able to delete it. Let's go here instead and say delete. 
Okay, and I'll just run all our tests again to check that we can build. Aha, okay, it looks like some other test class was relying on a function that we just deleted. So let's undo if we can. Uh, it turns out we cannot. So we'll go back here and we will go to commit and we'll say, let's roll that back. And now let's go back into that file and see what we were using. And the answer is this transactionally. So it looks like we defined it in this file and then used it in Fixture because it was useful in other places. So let's just take that out of there and put it into Fixture that wants to use it and maybe make it private so that nobody else can. Now back to dual items tests. That now can't see transactionally, but that's okay because we are about to delete that whole class to start with and run. Aha, that's interesting. Let's have a look, see what we have here. Remember to close DB items class. And it says Duke items is not open when dual items test doesn't exist. Hmm. Okay, well, it was quite a long time ago, but in the back of my mind, I seem to remember that the DB items here, which used to be Duke items, is open. Ah, uh, yes, because somewhere in dual items test, we had to override a method in order, I think, to induce some errors. So I think what happened was I wasn't happy with this being open, so I wrote this test to see that if we don't have a dual items test to check that I remember to close DB items or rather not make it open. So it should be that if we make that not open and rerun. Ah, that's good. So this has now done its job of reminding me a thing to do. So now I should be able to delete to that file and also now the tests for dual items and run. Good, and we're down to 992 milliseconds. That's promising. Okay then, now IntelliJ shows us there are no references to dual items, so we should be able to delete that. Now that's removed the class, but now there are a whole bunch of things that the class use that we should be able to remove. Just gonna do those with F2. Delete, F2, delete, F2. I'm pretty sure that nothing should be left in this file by the time we're done. And this is quite a slow way to find out. Okay, I wonder if IntelliJ is clever enough to have deleted the file altogether and now there's nothing in it. Let's have a look. Oh yes, dual items has been deleted, that's good. Okay then, back in our app, you can see the stock file is unused now. And that's because we are no longer creating a stock file items. Let's go and have a look at stock file items. Here it is. And the question is now, is it used by anything other than tests? Uh, no, it isn't. That's good. So again, we should be able to delete the test. And now stock file items is itself unused. If we look inside here, in particular in save, you can see there's some pretty hairy code. We're creating a temp file for the version. We're saving it to that, and then we're saving to another temp file. This was all to guard against data loss in the file system, but luckily it's no longer required. So let's delete it. Splendid. Good point to run the tests, I think. And they are even quicker, good. And now let's go down to stock file and say safely delete that parameter. That's good. And I think if we were now going to look for places that call this, there would be a bunch of mains. Let's have a look. No reference to stock file in there or there or there or whatever smoke test is. And I suppose there are no changes there because we defaulted the file in this invoke. Run again. Oh, 700 milliseconds. And we're now carrying quite a bit less code on our journey with us. I'm just going to have a look at our changes. There's a removal of our stock file and our dual items and our stock file items. That's what we expect. F2 in here to see whether there's any issues and apart from HTTP URL, none. Next file. The only change we made here was to shut DB items. Although we still have our issue with context receivers which are being pulled from under us. Next, dual items has been deleted. Dual item test has gone. Fixture has gained transactionally from the other test. 
Remember to close DB items class has gone now I have remembered and stock file items is gone too, as has its tests. So let's commit those with remove dual items and stock file items. Now we can trust DB items. Commit. There are four warnings which are context receivers. While we're having a little tidy, I notice that DB items in its save and load basically says DSL context save and DSL context load. But those functions could be private because I don't think we test them separately. Let's find out. Yeah, that's true. Now these are quite complicated, but I don't think it really helps hiding the complication here. So I think I'm going to inline this so we can see what it's actually doing. And oh dear, not a good inline. What's that saying? With something, something unit, this items. Uh, I think that is just items. And who knows what that type parameter is doing there. Am I right? I am good. And now same for load. Let's inline that. And we seem to have the same madness here. So I think we should be get rid of that. And that. Oh my goodness me. Well, I guess that is just items. And I'm assuming that is just max. Now the rest of this isn't compiling, but we seem to be returning successive unit here. Not IntelliJ's finest refactor. I think maybe this is just return success of with items that whole block see whether that's right still not something about stock list and stock list loading error hmm i think at this point we'll back all that out see if we can do a little bit better let's pull this into a variable and now inline that oh yes this value equals unit i have no idea how that came about but I think we should be able to say val value equals that thing and then fix up as before. Ah, it's the return that's the issue, isn't it? Take the return out. So if records is empty, stock list, else, stock list, and delete that one. To hate it when everything goes red. This is complaining about nothing. I don't know what on earth that is doing there. Let's get rid of that to see whether that does it. Ah, there we go. So let's see whether that still works. It does, although we seem to be back to 1.2 seconds. Just try again. Maybe it's just random variation. Yes, that one was quicker. I think I might just call that stock list. And I really find it hard to believe that I need that gubbins there. And I don't seem to. Now I'm looking at it, the type of this is a duke result. I don't know whether we're pulling everything back from the database and then finding the first by modified. I don't think so, but that's a thing we can look at later. And now we can see the wood for the trees. Thing one, little squiggle there. Oh, those are all apparently more important than this one, but we should be able to fix is empty. Oh, so that's interesting. I get a warning either way, it seems. Ho hum. That will do. So I'm going to commit that with tidy DB items. Does anyone know how I can get rid of this pop up with the keyboard? Turn off or change behavior. I do want to show it. Settings. Sticky balloon. Maybe I just want a balloon. Let's try that instead. Okay. But I guess it's still sticky as a balloon, so I'm going to have to get rid of it that way. Now then, how confident am I in the safety of that change? We have lots of integration tests, but they all use our in-memory implementation of items. So if we go to items, you'll see that we have this in-memory items that we're using for the tests. Now, in-memory items and DB items pass the same tests because their tests both implement this items contract. But for speed, we don't actually have any integration tests that use our database items. As we go on, I think that's the thing we might want to fix. But for now, I think that probably I will restart our test main, knowing that that will be taking all of our changes and just reading from the database, and then manually 
Let's have a look here, refresh this. It's still good. Check we can delete two items. Yes, we can. Check that we can add Fred Banana. Oh, magical banana with a sell by date of some time and a quality of something. And there's our magical banana. So some due diligence at least. Let's just run those tests one last time, see how they're doing. Well, certainly reliably quicker than they were when we came in. That's a good thing. So our app is quite a bit leaner now than it was, and we don't have the psychic weight of unnecessary code cluttering our code base. I'd still be interested in finding ways to have our tests run quicker. And I promised that I'd look at test containers for hosting the database. I don't know whether test containers will make things faster or slower, but now that we've simplified our database testing, I suppose it'd be a good time to find out. Now would also be a good time to subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Like this video so YouTube knows you like this video, but only of course if you do actually like this video. And finally, if you're going to be at Comp 2025 or even just in Copenhagen in May, then please consider signing up for the workshop that Nat Price and I are running. It's called Refactoring to Functional Kotlin, and we'll give you hands-on experience of taking legacy code and safely migrating it to a functional style. Places are limited, so buy now at kotlinconf.com workshops. Thanks for watching.